happy wednesday and it's time for after work after school story and i was saying the wrong title i kept on saying i had leadership on my mind a lot the last couple days so i kept on saying this little I, I kept on saying this book was Little Leaders, but it's Little Legends. Well, anyway, we're going to read about some of our African-American male heroes. And like I said, we want to focus more on those who are obscure. We know our top five. Oh, my goodness. Who are our top five that we know so much about? Dr. Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela, Jackie Robinson, Frederick Douglass. But we want to hear about more. And our first one, hey, Benjamin Banneker. Okay, so I'm going to, how, how am I going to do this? So I can read it and... You can still look at this and still have proper lighting. Okay. I think that would be good. All right. Although Benjamin attended school for only a few years before working on his father's farm, he loved to read and study. He became so good at math that people came from all around Maryland to test him with questions. Yes. They were amazed at how quickly he answered them. He would ask math questions too, writing them as poems. That's different. Benjamin wanted to use his abilities to help people. At 15, he created an irrigation system that kept water flowing to his farm's crops. His farm's crops. It was so effective that even during watch, no, even during droughts, the Banneker farm flourished. That's wonderful. In 1753, oh my goodness. Almost, yeah, over 250 years ago. Wow. He became fascinated with a friend's watch. Watches were rare at that time. And his friend let him borrow it. That was generous. Benjamin studied the watch and eventually built his own full-size clock, the first built in America. News of Benjamin's clock spread throughout Maryland, and he was approached by George Ellicott, a landowner and an amateur astronomer. The two became friends, and George lent Benjamin some of his astronomy equipment and books. Benjamin became obsessed with the stars, lying down outside all night to observe the skies, then going to sleep after dawn. Oh, come on, Benjamin. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking about a passion. When people saw him in bed during the day, they thought he was lazy. Oh, no. As his knowledge grew, Benjamin even spotted errors in George's books. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Getting rid of this cold. Woo! The last vestiges of it. Around 1791, Benjamin wrote an ephemeris, ephemeris, a chart of the movements of stars and planets. George's cousin, Andrew, read it and asked Benjamin to be his assistant for a very special project, surveying and designing land that would become Washington, D.C., the young nation's new capital. Benjamin agreed, and they set to work. When his project with Andrew was over, Benjamin returned home and worked on an almanac, a book about upcoming natural events. He used his writing to speak out about the injustice of slavery and defend the humanity and intelligence of black people. Benjamin was an exceptional scientist and inventor who, through quiet observation and diligent work, 
helped shape American history. Wow, he sounds like a wonderful man. Okay, I think we can squeeze one more. The next person, his name is James. Oh, wait a minute. We're gonna have the same picture for, oh no. But I guess they got the same, same head shape. But at least he's changing his clothes. Now, wait a minute now. Do you have the same person's head? Oh no. She changed a little bit. I guess this is computer il illustrations. Hmm. All right, James Armstead Lafayette. Have you ever heard of him? Mm. He was a revolutionary war spy. Not much is known about James' life before the Revolutionary War. He was born enslaved in Virginia, and his owner, who managed military supplies, taught James to read and write so he could be a better worker. During the war against the British, James heard that... Any slave who fought for the Americans' Continental Army would be freed if the Americans won the war. He got his owner's permission to enlist and in 1781 was assigned to serve under Marquis de Lafayette, a young French aristocrat fighting for the American cause. At first, James used his knowledge of the Virginian landscape to transport messages. But then James and Lafayette had a better idea. James could spy on the British. Ah, Posing as a runaway slave, James went to the British camp commanded by Lord Charles Cornwallis. James helped lead troops through the unfamiliar land. No one suspected that he could read and write. Mm, so generals and other soldiers talked about their tactics in front of him. And he was given access to British maps and plans. Secretly, he memorized details. Don't you see that? Genius. It's within, it's within us. He memorized details. Remember, who was that? Ah, uh, the founder of the library. He memorized pages of documents, law clerk documents. Oh, who's the one? Now, isn't that a shame? That's not good. Oh, 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 oh. Girl, that's gonna bother me. Hold on. Oh, getting distracted, but. Schomburg, Arturo Schomburg. He was the one, he memorized pages and pages and pages. It's within us. Strong brains, strong minds. Anyway, he memorized details. And, on the, um, and he reported back to Lafayette. James became so trusted by the British that he was asked to spy on the Americans. <laughs> he agreed, but gave the British only false information. Equipped with James' accurate information about... British troop size, strategies, and morale, the Continental Army defeated the British at Yorktown, effectively ending the war. Imagine Cornwallis' surprise when he entered Lafayette's headquarters to surrender and saw James there. Ooh. After the war, enslaved people who served as soldiers were freed. But James had not technically been a soldier and he was not freed. He petitioned for his release, but was ignored. It wasn't until Lafayette wrote a letter commending James' service that his petition was granted, and he was freed in 1787. James took the name Lafayette to honor his commander and friend. He lived the rest of his life as a farmer and family man, secretly one of America's greatest heroes. I never heard of James Armstead Lafayette. But isn't that wonderful? African-American male who was brilliant, savvy, and wise. All right. I hope you have a wonderful evening. And uh, we thank this author for her brilliance, too. Pause it so you can read it. Bye-bye.